We're looking to the future. And this anniversary is an opportunity for us, while we're grateful for the past, also to look to the future and to renew our commitment to Christ and His church, to renew our energy and our faith. If the church in the future is going to be as vibrant and strong in the future as it has been in the past, we need to provide financial security and financial stability for the days and, and the years to come. The issue is that families today, particularly middle class families and poor families, working class families, do not have the means to support a, their children in Catholic education. Why should we continue to have Catholic schools? Why should we support children coming in? Very simple answer. It's the only place where you will have an education in the faith. Every single day, five days a week, in all 40 schools in the diocese, they're taught to know Jesus Christ, to love his church, that's incomparable. You won't find that any place else. The brownstone outside has a, a, a life of about 100 years or so, so it's chipping away. The biggest challenge is putting a new roof on the building. It's leaking in a lot of areas, and we don't want to ruin the beautiful interior, so that's a necessity. These are the moments of our church. This is where Christ is meeting his flock, and I'm just excited to be a part of that you know, to be an instrument. Because it's not about us as priests, it's about God, it's about Christ. But because he's so good, because God is so generous, he's offered, right, the possibility, he's asked men to serve him to be his instruments. These instruments of mercy, his instruments of truth, his instruments of love to heal a broken world. It's so important to give back to these people who have given their entire lives to all of us. What they do is like unmeasurable. Yeah, I, t I totally agree. I think that giving back to the priests is extremely important. Their entire career is dedicated to preaching the Word of God. As a bishop, I'm also very concerned about, involved in, and committed to the well-being of our parishes. If people are happy with their parish, they not only want their parish to be successful, but they are willing to also support the work of the diocese. Everyone wins. This is not work for me. I feel like it's a mission. We do life things, things that are happening to people every day. I'm grateful for God's Catholic charities because those are the people who sustain us. You know, they own the fact that these doors are open. It's because of them. It's because of them that we're able to feed people. You know, if it wasn't for them, I'm not sure what we would do. This capital campaign, grateful for God's providence, will raise $50 million to meet the needs of our diocese in six critical areas. The first is to support our parishes. From the very beginning, from the first day that we spoke about doing this campaign, one of the things that I insisted upon and everybody agreed about was that the parishes had to be one of the major beneficiaries of this campaign. Every parish will receive 40% of every dollar that's raised up to goal. Over goal, um, if the parishes go over goal, they will receive 60%. The campaign will assist our seminarians with the cost of formation. Eight million dollars will go to the Bishop Mulvey Endowment to help meet the costs of their formation and education. So it's not as if uh, we can just put a man before the bishop, ordain him, and then he's going to be a great priest. May God who has begun the good work in you. It takes work. There are costs involved with that. That shouldn't affect your freedom in responding to this call. It's a, it's a reality, it's a fact, it's something that we have to face. I love every aspect of the priesthood, serving people, serving the parish, uh, uh, celebrating Mass every day, celebrating the sacraments. An injection of $8 million to an endowment fund will address the benefits and medical expenses for current and future retired priests. A priest is ordained to be a priest. It isn't a career, it isn't a job, it isn't a profession. Uh, it's a lifetime commitment. The beauty of being retired from administration is that we are still free 
to exercise uh, ministry uh, with uh, God's holy people. I just do priestly things now, and I love doing that. That's what I was, that's what I was ordained for, and that's what I loved about the priesthood. I've always revered my, the senior priests, and won't be long, and I'll be one too. <laughs> I believe as a church, it's, it's so important to support our existing Catholic schools in their work and to continue through the Catholic schools to try to reach out to this culture in which we live in and rejuvenate it. I believe if back in the day as they offered free education, if we could offer a free education, our schools would be full. And so any way we can subsidize the educational cost for our parents um, is definitely worth, worth the effort. We are an inner city school and we make a difference for these children and these families. We have about 90% of the school is free or reduced lunch. We're a diocesan school, we're not a parish school. And the diocesan assistance that we get every year that makes all the difference in the world, so many of our families. Having the faith there and, and being taught by people who are living it, by, by teachers who are living it, by you know, a pastor who was the pastor of the church. It taught me the three great values of faith, service, and community. From there is where I really built up my, my sense of character. There is no shortage on homeless people. Like, we have new people experiencing homelessness for the first time that wind up at our door every evening. My wife passed away two years ago. We were married 41 years, and a year before that, my son passed away from cancer. It just kind of fell apart, and I lost the business, and I ended up on the street. Somebody told me about this place. We don't want them to look homeless. Like We want them to feel and look human. We want them to be ready for a placement, you know, a job interview. Love one another as I have loved you. The Lord says that. Think of others. Think of others. Think of people who need you. Four million dollars from this campaign will go toward a new roof and other urgent repairs to the historic cathedral of Saints Peter and Paul. That's a beautiful cathedral that we have. Beautiful. That's our mother church. Uh, when something happens to a mother church, it's our responsibility to take care of it. We have tens of thousands of people who come here every year uh, for special events in their lives, in the life of the church. So it really is the people's church. The challenge goal for this campaign is $50 million. We ask everyone to participate to the best of their ability with a four-year pledge commitment. Your tax-deductible, sacrificial gift can be paid monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. Uh, of course, this campaign is about raising money, but it's also an opportunity to renew our faith because what we're doing is supporting the work of Christ's church to preach the gospel, to proclaim the kingdom, to serve God's people, to educate children, to help the poor, all these things that are part of our heritage, now we have a chance to continue in the future. There's a scripture passage that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. This is a way of saying thank you to God. We're asking them to do it out of gratitude to God for His goodness to them. Ultimately, this is going to be an expression of our faith and our hope and our love as we share our financial resources. Our Lord said, shout it from the housetops, and that's what we're trying to do. Today in my life as a priest and as a Catholic, I'm grateful for the sisters of St. Dorothy who taught me. I am grateful for life, that God gave me this beautiful life in this wonderful country. And I'm most grateful for God's providence. We are, we are grateful for God's providence. I'm Gene Valicente, and I'm grateful for God's providence. I'm grateful for God's providence, certainly. Grateful to God for the gift of providence and for the life of providence that he makes possible for us. We're grateful for God's providence. Without God's providence, I honestly don't think I uh, would be here. I am Ben. I am Jenny. I'm Aylan. We, we are, are grateful, grateful for God's, God's providence. providence. You know, we teach truth, we inspire service, and we build community. And for that, I'm truly grateful for God's providence. We are grateful for God's providence. We are grateful for God's providence. Together we can all say that we are grateful for God's providence.